Okay, question two. Now this is what our question two says. A sealed one litre container of gas has a temperature of 40 degrees. Calculate the increase in temperature needed for the gas to expand to five times its original volume. I've changed this question a couple of times, so that's why it doesn't read properly like this. I'm not going to change it again. What assumptions have you made during this calculation as well? Now what we're seeing is we have a change in volume and a change in temperature. So this means we're going to use our combined gas law. Because we have a change in one of these values, we're going to use our combined gas law. PV over NT equals PV over NT. Now we look at what's constant. What's constant, it's a sealed container, so we're not going to add any number of moles to it. So constant, we just scrub all out, scrub out. We also haven't had any mention of pressure in this thing here. So we need to assume that pressure is going to be constant as well and cross pressure out. That leaves us with a V over T equals V over T, which is known as Charles's law. Because you know Charles, he dealt with temperature and expanding gases by heating them up. So what we're left with is V1 equals T1 equals V2 equals and T2 equals. What are our values here going to be? Our volume is going to be, our initial volume is one, our final volume Let's read it. Expanded to five times its original value, so it is five. Five times its original value is five. Our temperature, first temperature, is 40 degrees Celsius. Now, as you know, Celsius, we don't want Celsius. We want to convert this into Kelvin. To do that, we add 273 degrees Kelvin to it. So our first temperature is going to be 313 degrees Kelvin, or just 313 Kelvin, because Kelvin's technically not in degrees. We'll move on, and we don't know this one, so we're going to find that temperature out. We write our Charles's law, V1 T1 over equals V2 T2. We rearrange it and work out that T2 is equal to V2 T1 over V1 rearranging this equation to get T2 as a subject, and we substitute our values in. We get our initial temperature, which is, I'll move over here now, is 313 Kelvin times 5, divided by our um, volume, which is 1. So therefore, our change, our final temperature, which is 313 times 5, is going to be 1,565 Kelvin. Okay, this is our final temperature. This is what T2 is. Now, the question didn't ask you what the final temperature was. The question asked you what the increase in temperature would have been, would have to be to get this value. So what we have to do is work out our Delta T, which is our change in temperature, this little thing here means change, equals our T2, our final temperature, take away our initial temperature, which is going to be equal to 1,565, take away 313, which is equal to, take away 313, 1,252 Kelvin, which is equal to, take away that is 979 degrees Celsius. So we have to increase this by 979 degrees Celsius to get an increase five times its original value at a constant pressure and with a constant number of moles. We need to convert to Kelvin before we do our Charles's Law and we need to convert back from Kelvin to find out um, final solution because our question was given in degrees Celsius, it's nice to represent our answer in degrees Celsius as well. But we did need to do move to Kelvin before we did the actual question there. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Why we cross out these things, what assumptions, we assume the pressure is constant because otherwise we wouldn't be able to do this question. And therefore you have that question answered. <laughs>
last um, gas law question, and it involves stoichiometry involving gases. Um, and it says, 2 grams of magnesium was added to 200 mils of 0.5 molar hydrochloric acid at standard laboratory conditions. Calculate the volume of gas produced and calculate the pH of the final solution. So obviously this is going to be a stoichiometry problem because we're giving two reactants and we want to find out our products and maybe some if some reactants left over because our pH is about our reactant. First thing we need to do, one, always we write an equation. Magnesium plus hydrochloric acid will go to hydrogen gas and magnesium chloride. Okay, we balance our equation, put a 2 there, that's balanced. This is solid, this is aqueous, this is gas, and this will be aqueous as well. All right, remember your states. We then need to find out um, what our number of moles of everything we can. A number of moles we can find out from magnesium. We can also find out number of moles from our hydrochloric acid as well. So because we can find out number of moles, I'll get that anyway, number of moles of magnesium is equal to m over mr, which is equal to 2 divided by 24, give or take, which is equal to 2 divided by 24, 0 0.083, 0 0.083 mole. Our number of mole of HCl is equal to C times V, because we've got concentration of volume, which is equal to concentration has to be in litres, 0 0.2, sorry, Volume has to be in litres, 0 0.2, times 0 0.5, which is our um, our concentration there. 0 0.2 times 0 0.5 equals 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Okay, that's how much hydrochloric acid we have. That's how much magnesium we have. Because we have moles of both reactants, we need to do a limiting reagent. And limiting reagent, as you know, I put it into a box and I say Mg over 1 equals HCl over 2, and we put our values in, 0 0.083 equals 0 0.1 over 2 equals 0 0.05. Our smallest value is our hydrochloric acid, that means that's going to run out first, so this is our limiting reagent. Okay, and therefore I'm going to have this left over. Okay, some of this, this is my in excess. And now I ignore this and I go on and do some calculations. First of all, I need to find out the gas that's produced. The gas is hydrogen. So I go number of moles of hydrochloric acid, which is my limiting reagent, over 2 equals my number of moles of hydrogen over 1. Number of moles of hydrochloric acid is 0 0.1 divided by 2 equals my number of moles of hydrogen gas over 1 equals 0 0.05 moles of H2 gas. So that's my number of moles of hydrogen gas. What I need to do is convert this into litres. I can do this in a few ways. I can use my PV equals NRT and substitute in my standard laboratory conditions, or I can use my molar volume for laboratory conditions. I know my molar volume, one mole of gas equals 0 0.2 sorry, 24.5 litres at SLC. So therefore, I can work out 0 0.05 mole of gas is going to occupy, well, it's going to be 24.5 times 0 0.5, 0 0.05, sorry. It's going to occupy 1.225 litres of hydrogen gas. That's using my molar volume at standard laboratory conditions. If you don't have standard laboratory, laboratory, laboratory conditions, you can't use this. What you can use is PV equals NRT, where P is a pressure, V is a volume, N is the number of moles, R is 8.1, 8.31, and temperature is the degrees Celsius, oh, sorry, temperature in Kelvin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange this, so V equals NRT over P, and I'll get my vo moles from down here is 0 0.05 times R, 8.131. Temperature is, at standard laboratory conditions, temperature is 298 degrees Kelvin, divided by my 
pressure in kPa, which is 101.3. And if I do this, I should get pretty much the same answer as I do here. So I'll do 0 0.05 times 8.31 times 2298 divided by 101.31 equals 1.222 litres. Once again, it's the same as this. Okay, if you can't remember your molar volume, go straight to do your pervert equation. That's the bell, so I'm just going to quickly explain what our final pH will be of the solution. Our final pH will be 7. Why is it going to be 7? We know it's going to be 7 because we have no hydrochloric left over. All of this is going to be used, so therefore you're going to go back to a neutral solution. If hydrochloric acid was not your limiting reagent, you would have some hydrochloric acid left over and you'll need to work out the concentration of hydrogen ions in that hydrochloric acid. Anyway, that's it. We're done. Um, watch this podcast again if you, I went too quickly for you, which I probably did. So slow it down and try and work out how I did this. I did it in two ways. One, using molar volume, and two, using my pervert equation. Done.